In many of my past talks and in several of the books I've written, I've spoken about the concept of you being sick, or people are sick because they want to be. It's their own fault. I'd like to explain that a little further in this talk. It's important for us to understand the basic traits of the conscious and the subconscious mind. I've spoken about them at great length in a couple earlier uh, talks that I have here on YouTube, so if you want to know the details, uh, go back to them, but I'd just like to review them quickly to, as a basis of my explanation. First of all, the conscious mind is a creature of habit, is geared very negatively, and is what makes the decisions. The subconscious mind is very similar to a five-year-old child. It's innocent, naive, wants to help you, but doesn't know how. Number two, it's always on, working all the time. Three, it can perform unlimited tasks simultaneously. Number four, it's non-judgmental. It's kind of like a hard drive of a computer. It just takes in information as much as it can without making judgments on it. That's the purpose of the conscious mind. Number five, it does not understand negative. Number six, it doesn't understand humor or sarcasm. Number seven, the subconscious mind is similar to an out of control genie. Whatever you focus on, it will always give it to you. It cannot not do that. That's its purpose. And number eight, it only focuses on the present. The subconscious mind does not understand the concept of past or future. It's just the now. So understanding all those things, and if you don't, like I said, be sure to go back to one of our previous lessons where I break it down. Here's the way it works. When you are focusing on not wanting to be sick, you hear some people say, oh, I don't want to be sick, I don't want this cold. Where is your focus? Your focus is on being sick. Your focus is on having the cold. Okay, let's go back a little further. I want to talk to you about your blueprint of birth. When you are born, you are born into this world in a happy, healthy, orderly state. Well, at least most of us, about 95%. The other five are the ones that maybe had birth defects or things coming from, uh, you know, they weren't healthy at birth. Well, there's not too much we could do about that, but we're going to deal with the 95% that were born in a healthy, happy, orderly state. Anything other than that orderly state would be considered a disorder. Anything that makes this child or this person unhealthy it would be a disorder. So sickness would be a disorder, having a cold would be a disorder, being broke would be a disorder if you think about it because when you're broke you can't pay your bills, it causes depression, causes all kinds of hardships and that's not your blueprint of birth. Okay, So anything other than the blueprint of birth is a disorder and can be turned back to an orderly state if you have the faith, the determination, and the belief to do it. Okay, So what are you focusing on? We mentioned a moment ago you can't be focusing on the negative. I don't want to be like that poor guy over there. What are you focusing on? Being like the poor guy over there. Also, your environment. What's going on around you in your personal environment? Are the people that you hang around with always focused on sickness? Do you get together maybe at some of these what I call victim meetings where you get together with family or friends and everyone seems to talk about their sickness. This one has diabetes, this one had heart trouble, this one's taking this medicine, this one's taking that medicine. It's almost like a rank system to see who has something worse than the last one. Okay, they're focusing on sickness and what's happening to you? You're focusing on sickness as well. Unfortunately, a lot of these people who are having these meetings where they're talking about how sick they are, where are the children when they're having these? Probably in the other room playing, but hearing about all the sickness that they're probably going to have when they get older. So their future blueprints, health blueprints, are being developed. So be careful what you're saying and be careful if your children are with an earshot of it as well. So step number eight, only the present. When you're saying to yourself, yeah, but I keep on wanting to be healthy, and I'm always saying I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, what are you focusing on? You're focusing on the lack of health now. Instead of saying I want to be healthy, you need to say I am healthy. I am happy. I am wealthy. I feel great. 
the old fake it till you make it. People say, but Rainey, you're telling me to lie to myself when I say I feel great and I don't. Exactly. By saying I feel great over and over, what's your subconscious mind hearing? I feel great. Especially if you're acting that way, what is it seeing? It's seeing you acting and feeling great and saying it, and that's what it's going to do because it's like an out-of-control genie. It will always give you what you focus on. You get up in the morning, you focus on, oh, woe is me, I feel terrible, sloping your shoulders in, head down, depressed. That's what you're going to get more of. Now, to those people that say, well, gee, I'm lying by saying I feel great, well, Aren't you lying the other way as well? When you say, oh, I feel terrible, is everything in your life terrible? Do you feel bad about everything? No, just parts of you feel terrible. So by saying, I feel great, even if there's a part of you that doesn't feel great, why not say I feel great? If you're not going to be 100% honest, you might as well do it in a way that's going to help you. So create your own reality. If you can imagine yourself feeling great, by saying it and picturing it and actually feeling great, you will turn that way. Why? Because the subconscious mind does not understand the difference between a real or an imagined memory. They hold the same value. Now you see where we're going with this.